Well, uh, welcome everybody to this webinar on the 19th of March 2018 for FX Street. Um, today we are going to, um, I use the, the title of the webinar was how to learn, rather learn to be a chart whisperer. And if you've ever seen the, the film, The Horse Whisperer, obviously that means something about uh, having a, a certain degree of a skill. Um, and I think that um, like anything else, trading is also um, a skill as well, something you can learn. And so today we're going to talk about some very, very subtle details that you may or may not have noticed in a price chart that are probably going to make an incredible difference in the way you understand uh, how price moves. Um, and for my, um, uh, for, for my members, I have been doing uh, creating a sample size of about 500 trades. And every week we go through um, the trades that we've that were filled and we have a look at them. And, and then we, we do things like this. So we, we, we find the commonalities between the winners and the losers. And this enables us to, uh, to assess uh, some similarities that there are with the winning trades and those that are with the losing trades. Because ultimately, we need to be able to answer the question, um, why are some trades winning and why are some trades losing? And of course, there will always be uh, a certain degree, to, uh, degree of randomness, obviously. Um, the whole point of learning a certain strategy is to enable you to uh, make sense of, of data, of a chart, price chart, something like this. And so this is based on about 100 trades. So we're not done yet, but we are certainly in the process of creating, gathering some very interesting information as to why some trades are losing and others are winning. And this is some of the information that we've been uh, gathering so far based on 100 trades. And so at the top of the list, we have uh, no concept of where price has been. And these are not in prioritized order. These are just um, kind of put on the on the slide um, in kind of a random order. And so in the top one here, no concept of where price has been. We're going to look at this in, a, in just a moment on a price chart. This is exceedingly important. Uh, not focusing on current price, so sentiment. So despite the fact that you could have a bearish stance on a given currency, um, intraday, it might have the sentiment that is moving price in the opposite direction. And so you have to know kind of what's what's moving price based on the time frames that you're looking at. So if you're looking on the monthly chart, then you'll probably realize that it's the interest rate swaps that are likely moving price. And so if you are trading big positions and you're simply holding the position overnight, well, then you're going to get paid interest. And so this, of course, is a, a very important factor when trading large position sizes over longer periods of time. But on the daily chart, sorry, on an intraday chart, so like a five, five minute, 15 minute, half an hour, one hour, this is completely different because throughout the course of a day, you have information that is released into the market. And this is going to affect the direction of a price. So even if you have a, a bullish stance for a given currency, uh, intraday, it could race lower very, very quickly, uh, 100, 200 pips in a matter of minutes due to some some piece of data that was released. So you have to be mindful of this. Then we have uh, trading against the major flows. And what do I mean when I say major flows? Well, I mean, my primary focus is supply and demand and currency strength. So the supply and demand is ultimately the flows. So you have price moving higher. The euro, US dollar is moving higher. This means that there is demand for the euro and there is supply of the, of the American dollar. So this is, of course, going to cause the currency pair to move higher. So this is super important. And we touched upon data releases. And then further down, another commonality of many of the losers was poor quality supply and demand. I mean, you can see on a price chart that, yes, price left this area very quickly. It must be a really good one, but it's not that simple, unfortunately. Uh, and so what you need to do is you need to pay attention to the anatomy of the supply or the demand that was formed prior to price leaving it. This is very important because if you have extended periods of supply and demand, so extended periods of uh, accumulation and distribution, well, this is ultimately telling a different story to a short period of accumulation distribution. So you want to see imbalances in supply and demand areas where these imbalances are very, very clear. Okay, then we have no concept what is driving price. So this kind of relates to 
this point up here. Um, if you're trading, let's say your, your entry time frame is like the four hour chart. It's good to know what's going on on the daily and the weekly chart so that you know what is driving price on these time frames. It's, it's essential to know this. And so why you can trade anti-trend, you can trade against the major flows. It's generally a pretty decent idea to trade in line with the major flows because then your positions are going to be managed typically a little bit uh, different had they been uh, anti, sorry, counter trend trades. And so knowing what's going on on uh, the higher time frames, ultimately what is driving price is a very, very good idea. Then we have traded zones, not exhibiting strength. This is kind of relating to this. And so we've devised kind of like a checklist. And this checklist enables you to assess the areas of accumulation and distribution in order to evaluate if they are good errors or not good errors at all. So we're going to have a look at those. And then we have poor trade management. I mean, a lot of the trades that we put on, we do, I don't fiddle with them. I put them on. I don't pay attention to too much of this or the stuff that's on the winning trades. I put trades on in what appears to be a good area. We have a one-to-one -one risk reward, just so we have some examples. Then we put the trade on and we walk away. We don't care what happens, okay? We're not interested in, we, we don't care if the trade wins or if it loses. We're simply trying to evaluate um, the process and kind of rather quantify the process um, so that we can form a list like this. And so we're not paying attention to trade management. Had we done that, well, then we could have had a much higher number of break-even trades and potentially some trades with smaller profits and other trades with very, very big profits. And so we, we haven't paid attention to this because this is going to vary um, based on stuff like this. So if you're trading with the major flows, well, then you can manage your trade uh, different uh, in contrast to uh, trading on a smaller time frame when you have intraday volatility uh, data releases to worry about. So this is a, this is a very important uh, aspect of, of these losers trades and something that we see um, in all of the, the losing trades. If we have a quick look at uh, the winning trades, I mean, what's, what's the difference here? Well, typically, we find that the trades that win are likely or more times than not moving in the direction of the major flows. And so we, we looked at the major flows just a minute ago, and we're simply assessing, ask rather answering the question, what is currently driving price? And this brings our attention to uh, reaction points in the market, okay? So if, if the most recently qualified area, rather origin of a move is weekly demand, well, then we have weekly demand that's driving price. If price has just reacted to a daily area of supply and we're having a reaction, well, then we have daily supply that is currently driving price. And so what we do is we will do our top-down analysis. We'll pay attention to these, these macro areas of supply and demand, and we'll move down to the micro areas of supply and demand. And we'll take the information, the insight that we gain on the higher time frames with us onto the smaller time frames. And, though, and, and by doing this, you're ultimately... Um, you've kind of flipped on the light switch in the room, okay? Okay, and so also, a lot of the winners that we have looked at are a result of us putting our entries where price has not been. And there's a very uh, easy, um, like a little trick that I will show you in just a minute that'll help you put your entries in a slightly better place. Um, and it's related to this here. I'm just going to show you uh, an example just in a second. but ultimately. Once you put on your trade, so you have your entry, your stop, and your target, then you ask yourself the question, okay, where do the retail traders have their stops? And then this will enable you to typically identify a swing high or a swing low or a period of accumulation, either in the form of a, a supply or demand continuation pattern. And then typically you want your entry to move just beyond that area. And we're going to look at this in detail in just a second. Okay, because this, of course, will, I'll wait, I'm going to go into detail on this in just a minute on a price chart, it'll make more sense. Okay, then we have here realistic targets. Yes, I mean, I, I put on a trade, I have a one-to-one a -one risk reward, I think, wow, one-to-one, -one. I mean, I'm risking one dollar, 
for a potential $1 profit, wouldn't it be nice if I could risk $1 for a potential $500? Wouldn't that be lovely? Yes, it would be lovely. The other question is, is it realistic? Uh, no, it isn't realistic. So you always have to be paying attention to opposing order flows. Okay. When I say opposing order flows, I mean opposing areas of supply and demand. So if you're buying at demand, while yes, your target, you'd like your target to be a very, very far away from your entry. Um, it doesn't matter where it is. Price doesn't care where it is. What you need to pay attention to is bumps in the road. And so you need to pay attention to areas of suppose, supposing supply and demand where price is very likely to react. Okay, and we're going to have a look at some examples now so that we can um, have a closer look at this. So if we have a look at this just here, um, actually, first of all, I'm going to um, walk through this list uh, one by one, and just have a look at what's going on here. So the first one, no concept of where price has been. So if we look at this, first of all, very quickly, this is a currency strength indicator. So I'm seeing this is a British pound. This is the American dollar, and this is this is daily currency strength, the thick lines, and the thin lines is the same, but it's four hour. And so I'm I'm looking at the major flows. Okay, so that actually already answers this question here, uh, trading against the flows. Do I want to be selling in a market where you can see a very, very clear divergence between the strength of the British pound and the American dollar, where we can see flows moving into the British pound and out of the American dollar, would it be a good idea to sell? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, you could do if you are managing your trades much more aggressively. But ideally, wouldn't it be better to buy at an area of demand when you can clearly see that we have a much bigger interest in buying the pound American dollar than selling? That's the way I look at it, at least. OK, so I mean, that was we touched on this one super quickly. Now we're going to go to this one. No concept of where price has been. We have a look at this. Assume that price is here. OK, price has just come down here. Price moves down here. And then you it's going to mark this off. You know what? Price is here. Just to, just to start a little bit earlier. So you can see price has moved away. We move down like this and then we moved away. So I'm going to have a vertical line now that's going to show us where price currently is. So price is currently here. Price went up here. It came down It moved down to the lows here, which is kind of testing uh, this high just here. Then it leaves. Then you ask yourself the question, where has price not been yet? OK, so. Price trades, click one hour, 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 and you think, Wow, here we have kind of a, a swing low. I mean, this would be a really good area to have an entry. OK, maybe it is on a smaller time frame. But, but if we look at this hourly chart, you can see that. Um, yes, I'll get to the uh, uh, to the or the or in just a minute. Uh, Zahayev, OK, promise I'll do the I'll do the next example there. And so you have to ask yourself the question. I mean, where has price already been? Well, price left. OK. So price is moving higher, higher, higher. Price has already been back to this level here. OK, you can see that price has already been back down here. And why is this important? Well, it's important because, I mean, price has to find liquidity in order to move. If you look at a price chart, you think, wow, I'm seeing all the information I need in, the, in order to make good, um, good trading decisions. As a matter of fact, you're not uh, for two very, very important uh, reasons. Number one. You can see filled orders on this chart and not filled orders. Sorry, you filled orders and not unfilled orders. OK, number two, um, you are looking at a pound American dollar. OK, you're not you're not. It's it's, a, it's one corner of the market. What about the pound, the pound yen and the pound this and the pound that? OK, this is one corner of the pound, one corner of the American dollar uh, equation. A tiny, tiny piece. But when you look at something like currency strength, which is considering the eight most traded currencies. So you have yeah, the major ones. Um, and so ultimately, we are seeing an index of the British pound and an index against the American dollar. Because on one price chart, um, the pound could be strong. And on another price chart, pound could be weak. Well, which one is it? Is it weak or is it strong? 
And, and it's because currencies are strong or weak relative to the currency that they are traded with. So in this example here, the pound is strong relative to the American dollar. But on another price chart, it might be weak and it might be moving lower. So you always have to focus, rather, you have to be aware of the fact that you are only seeing a very, very small slice of the information required in order to make good trading decisions for the British pound and the American dollar. Okay. And so looking at this information very clearly, we want to be buying these. Okay. So back to this example, I mean, price went up, it came down. So price has already been back down to this area once. Where? Here. And so this is the most, is the, is the, um, is the, the area where you do, you do not want to buy, buy this uh, security for a price any more expensive than the low of this plus the spread. Where does price come back to? It came back to here, which is pretty much the same area. We have maybe half a pip um, difference between the two, the low of here and the low of here. And why is this? I mean, why is this? Well, let me try and draw something here. So you have price is moving uh, higher and lower, higher and lower. I mean, what is it that is causing price to move higher and lower? Well, it's pretty much, rather, it is liquidity, unfilled orders. So if I draw like a little graph like this, we have current price here and we have liquidity. So we have high liquidity, low liquidity, and then high liquidity, like so. Price can easily move back and forth between here and here. Okay, so price can, it can go this way and it can go that way pretty easily. Why? Because liquidity is low. The price is going to have much more difficult time moving here and here. Why? Because liquidity is high. Okay, so we have, we have buyers that are coming this way. Buyers, buyers, buyers. What do we have on the opposing side of the market? We have bearish liquidity. So we have sellers coming this way, selling, selling, selling. What do we have on the opposing side of the market? We have bullish liquidity. And so the sellers must be able to overwhelm the buyers in order for price to move lower. And if you look at something like this, um, it makes very, very, it makes sense why price would have a tough time moving below a low like this. Okay. Because you have, I mean, price has moved down to this level here. And so buying here would be kind of like buying down here, like buying in here or here. But buying down here is moving over here because, I mean, price has already been back, been back down to this level here. So obviously, liquidity has been cleared out down to this low here, unless fresh liquidity has entered the market since that. And looking at this price structure here, it has not. Okay. And so we want to find the price, the price level where price has not returned to yet. And that is the low of this little push or lower. Okay. Good. So that's, um, that's a very important uh, point about uh, knowing. So let me turn off. There we are. About knowing where price has been back to. Uh, not okay. So this is this is probably one of the most important points um, that I'm going to make today, and that is um, uh, having a concept of where price has been. Okay. Now we're going to look another example. Price keeps ticking along, tick 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 tick, like so. So price came down once. It came back two times. This is the first test. Do we want to take it on following tests? The short answer: no. And why not? Because price came back here. We clear out liquidity like we saw in our little curve here. It's thinner. So each following test, price is going to have an easier time to move through this level. <clears throat> and I, I often refer to this as pancakes. I'm just going to draw an example where we have where we have we have pancakes here on like stacks of pancakes. I always use this. You'll hear me use this a lot. Okay, so right here, the low. Just here is the top pancake. So a hungry trader comes and he's got his fork and he pokes his fork into the stack of pancakes. Once price comes back down there, once price comes and takes 
the first pancake, well then the first pancake is going to be gone. So this one no longer exists. In the future, when price comes back down there, when the hungry buyer comes to eat more pancakes, what does it have to do? Well, it has to move lower. It has to move lower to the next pancake or pool of liquidity. Okay, that's ultimately what these pancakes are. And so now that one's gone. That was a cross there. Price has to come lower next time once again. Okay, and we have moved lower. And the process goes on again and again and again until these pools of liquidity are gone, which could be here we probably have like a micro area of, of demand here. And once that is gone, then there's nothing to do here. Okay, which is why it's a super good idea to only trade the is on the first test because every time price comes back to a level it taints the area it consumes liquidity at that level making following tests much lower probability and so the first one held did the next one hold it did not it went lower and we can expect this to happen okay so once you see an error being tested once leave it alone don't touch it leave it alone and wait for price to come lower okay so price ticks along tick 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 we have new hours moving in tick 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 you can see we start, you can see that we have these, we have these lows, sorry, these highs, they're moving lower. Price comes down. Do we take, sorry, I should have looked at this one. Should we, should we have taken this one? No, I mean, price went lower. And here, if we move this back here, where has price been back to? Well, price has been back to this level here. So where does the buy zone start? It starts at the lower of this candle here. Price comes down to it, done. It tests it once. Do we take it again here? No, you don't. You always, let me clean up my line. You always move it down like that. Okay. It's tested. Price has come back down here. Now price has come back down here. So did you want to buy in here or here or here? No, you want to look at the lowest area, the lowest price level that price has returned to prior to the release. Okay. And when you're down here, I mean, price, let's say for a second that the price is here. Price has just left. I mean, where would you buy? Would you buy here? What you'd want to ask yourself now is um, what is price reacting on? So you find the origin of the move, which is for this move we have from this low to this high. You can zoom in. I can just draw it like, let me draw it in with a pen quick so you can see. So we have from here to here. You have to ask yourself the question, I mean, what is price uh, reacting on? Is this or asked, using another question, is this a parent or is this a child? Okay, so what that means is, and we have, I'll use this all the time, parents and child. So you have, we have price moves in here, it leaves, it comes down, and then it leaves again. This is the parent, and this is the child, okay? So this is the parent, and this is the child. So right now, this, is a, a child why because it's reacting to this over here and this is this is a uh, this is lower probability and this is higher probability and so when you have areas that are so close together as these two are well, then you want to focus lower okay and you have a, a pretty clear uh, area of demand here we had it's not a pretty area because we have a lot of accumulation. I mean, price went up and we moved side. This is agreement in supply and demand. We don't like agreement. We want to see uh, disagreement. And price leaves very quickly. So price, we have all of these important highs. We had uh, this one here. We had this area of supply here, which is removed like so. It's kind of pretty much taken out here. And the area of demand that uh, that this break of this or this consumption of this area of supply originated from is down here. Not this one, because price, the move through the area did not originate it for here, through here. It originated from here. Okay. So price went up. We have a very clear, uh, strong move high. We moved above all of these highs. So we actually have a couple of things going. And we also have this. We have this area here. This is not pretty area, but it is um this is the origin, the area of supply that caused price to move below here. So price went down, tested it once, twice, and now it's gone. Then you ask yourself the question, what area of demand consumer supply? This one here. This is the one here. So this is where you would look to buy. And also, 
looking at this and where price has already been, this is the beginning of the buy zone. And the low of the area of demand is the end of the supply zone. If price moves through here, we'll either, either poke into some uh, nice orders, liquidity, and in the form of, for example, stop orders or buy limits, and this will cause price to go, uh, go higher. And according uh, to my software here, it, we have the blue rectangle here. This is four-hour demand. On top of that, we have a white rectangle. This is one-hour demand. So price went into the one hour demand and poked into the four hour demand. If we have a look at that, you can see what it looks like. And it looks like this. This is, this is, looks very good actually. On a four hour chart, we had one period of accumulation. Price left. Great. Price came down. This is good. If you look at the, the, um, the higher lower ratio here, you can see that price moved higher in two periods. It moved to the highs in two periods. How long did it take for price to get back there? I mean, it took a lot, a long, a lot longer. It took. It took uh, it took 17 periods to go back to reach back here. So this is a very very good sign. So price went up quickly. We're struggling. We are we're we're looking for orders. We're driving price lower to find buy orders. We poke into this. We find some price pulls back. We kind of get a slingshot and then price pops up like so. Okay. So this is a really good example of how we focus on where price has been back to. And I encourage you to to use this. Uh, like a vertical uh, horizontal line like so. So you start here. On the first test, you leave it alone. You move lower. After price comes back here, then this is the, the most expensive price you want to pay. After it comes back down here, you move it lower. After it comes back down here, you move it lower. So this is higher risk. This is lower risk. Okay. Um, okay, so let me get have a look here. Um, where is the fresh supply in the pound US dollar above the current price? Well, we can, we can have a look at that in, and you know, we can do that now. Okay. So we can, first of all, I'd like to consult the higher time frames. Why is this important? Well, this is important because we need to know what's going on here. Where are the major flows? What are they doing? Well, interest rates, they are negative. So you are going to, um, you're going to lose money. So swap long is minus four and a half per standard lot. And, uh, the opposite is a 1.8 per standard lot. Okay. And so you want to be mindful of that, but this isn't really affecting us on, on these, on these smaller uh, time frames. What you can see here, you can see that, I mean, price has done the same thing. We were on the hourly chart, like so. Go to the hourly chart. We did this, you know, like we did. Down, 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 and our price is moving higher. So, what you do is you go, you do the same. Okay, where has price been back to? It's been back here. And now price has been back here. So, you don't want to sell for price any cheaper than the 140.87, but that isn't it because we have to go back. Okay, where has price been? And notice that this. What we're seeing now is pretty close to this, where we had the lows, but we had demand down here. Price naturally moved into the demand in order to find liquidity to push price. You can see that we have something like that going on here. And so we have the high here. You can see, even looking at this, we have a move back here. We have a move back here. Can you see? This is a mic, this is micro supply. This is an arrow that's pointing to the edge of a sell zone on a much smaller time frame. If you look high, we have another one here. And if you look high, you have another one here. Can you see here we have price rallied, accumulated, and left, accumulated, and left. So if we go to the four hour chart, you can see that we have this. The 141.15. I would not touch price until it got at the very cheapest up to here. And this is the beginning of the sell zone. Why? Because here we have a micro supply being formed. Price went down. Inside this, I'll draw. I'm just going to draw this to make it clearer. So inside this here, this little, sorry, this little one just here. And it looks like this. Price came down. Came down, 
it went up and it went down like so. And so inside this candle, you have something that will look like some kind of a pullback price goes down, it comes up and then it goes down again. And so this pullback corresponds to the high of this candle just here. So price has cleared out liquidity up to the area that starts at the high of the pullback. OK, and so your area would go like this. And so I wouldn't want to buy, sorry, sell for a price any cheaper than the 141, sorry, the 14100 ish, the big figure as well. That's another good reason uh, uh, the price might have a bounce. We have a, the psychological area of 14100. But looking at this, you can ask yourself the question. OK, if we were to sell here. I'm going to go back to the slides. Um, I'm going to move over here. Um, put your stops where retail, the retail market have their, so I put your entry where the retail market has their stops. So assume that we had retail traders trading here. Like, great, this is a super good place. I want to sell here. Where are these guys going to have their stops? Well, they are going to have their stops just above here. Okay, so what we ultimately what we're doing here is where we have this move down here. The origin of this move down is here. And so you want to ask yourself, okay, is this a parent or is this a child? Is this, has this area of supply been established independently or is it reacting to another area of supply? And the reason this, this is important for us is because if it was established independently, it's fresh supply. If it has not been established independently, if it is a reaction to something else, then it's uh, then it's not fresh because price has been back to the area. So this is not supply. It's a reaction to supply, which is here. OK. And so the retail market, they're going to have their they're going to have their entries to sell around here and their stops are going to be above. So what we'll do is we'll mark off the highs like so. And we'll say, has price been back to this area before? Yes, it has. Where here. So this is the first test. Do we think that price is going to stop here? Maybe, maybe not. I would feel much more comfortable continuing to move left and asking that same question. And so we have this area here. Is this a parent or is it a child? As a matter of fact, this is reacting to this. But what I do like about this is price left very, very uh, forcefully. What I don't like about it, it's been tested before. So I wouldn't trade this one here. You could do it and you could get away with it, but I'm not going to do it. Um, and so for this, you could say, well, this is actually a reaction to this. So this is the supply here. So I can get it to snap. There we are. Price has come back there once, twice and three times. But notice that it hasn't come all the way to the area. But what I don't like about this is a very small area we have. Let's see. We have 18 pips. It's a pretty small area. Um, and so this would make me feel more inclined to continue to look higher. OK, so we have child, child, parent. But this parent has been tested once, twice, so I won't trade it again. So we move higher. We have this area here. And the reason I don't like this so much is because price kind of wriggled around like so. But we do have, I mean, this this whole structure, price structure here is standing on this leg here. You can see this is a leg down like so. And so you can look here. You can say price has been back to here. So we do have a couple of areas here that might be interesting to us. We have we have this one here. The indicator has already found them for us. And we have another one here, which looks like this. OK, so here we have, we have a, a child. Here we have the parent. And so let me remove this. So price has uh, has been back to this area where here. And so this is the area that is most interesting. Keep in mind the fact that it's been tested two times. And so you can keep doing this and you can keep moving on and on and on and on and you'll ne never get any trades. So what do you do about that? Well, you have to focus on um, uh, these price imbalances. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so price, th this is not a, a very interesting area to us because price has already been back. to this area once price. This is the third time. So you want to start looking higher. And so looking at this one here um, for this price imbalance, which left from this area, this is the origin of this 
this move here, and price is still to return to it. Okay. So despite the fact that you can keep going on and on and on and on and on, you have to focus on the, uh, the currently active prices and balances. And here we have one. This one has not been filled. So price is kind of moving just below this area. Um, and so this would be one that you could continue to trade. But you know what? I'm, why I would not even consider it? Um, well, for the reasons we discussed earlier, price has been back there a couple of times. Another one, I don't like this. I don't like the price has moved up and now it's accumulating. What is this doing? This is price moving up. And now we're accumulating orders uh, potentially likely to move higher. I don't like this. If price was just up here underneath and sticking to the bottom of the area and I had an entry there, I would get out of the trade. Um, because that would make me feel very, very nervous. We want to see an imbalance in supply and demand, not a balance. We want to see disagreement. So if price is able to move up to an area that you're looking to trade and kind of stay there for a while, I mean, this is telling us that we have an agreement, and which is not what we want to see. We want to see this. Price comes down. We have big candle, one candle, then price moves away. This is disagreement. Um, disagreement, agreement, Okay. Here we have a little bit of agreement here. Um, yeah, so you want to see short periods of accumulation. Okay, here we had one period of accumulation. Price tested it. We had a very quick reaction, then price left. This price moving up into this now, price is simply uh, consuming. This is price is consuming the liquidity that we can see, which starts here. So the sell zone starts here. Price is poked into it, and now price is chewing away at it now. So we're probably going to get a small reaction in here. We have a look. Price is probably going to move down. Um, and so also focusing on the major flows, if we have a look on the hourly chart, what's going on, we can see that we have a lot, of, a lot more interest in buying uh, than in selling. Okay, so keep this in mind. But always ask yourself the question, where has price not been to? And focus on these little pullbacks. Okay, so when price did this, until it came back here, you could sell there. But now that price has been back there again, you don't do it. I wouldn't have taken this one. Number one, the flows are moving against it. Number two, price has already been back to that area. So you ultimately want to find these nice fresh areas, which are likely uh, more to the top of this. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, have a look at a couple more of these. Um, yeah, I mean, data releases, these are important if you're trading on the smaller time frames for obvious reasons. If we have an entry to sell here and we have non-farm payrolls or we have a uh, carny uh, speaking in half an hour or one hour, do you want to keep your order in there or not? Uh, probably not. You'll find that if you're on the, the bigger time frames, that data releases tends to play a, a smaller um yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't influence price as much on the bigger time frames. And often you'll find that if you're trading monthly, weekly, and daily supply and demand, you actually need big data releases to drive price to your entry. So if you're, if you have the helicopter view, um, then I think that you'll find that, um, that you can leave your orders in there, depending, of course, on what the order, sorry, on what the news is that's coming out. If we have interest rates, um, then you might want to be a little bit careful, depending on how far away your entry is to current price at the time that interest rate numbers are released. But you'll find that uh, the news is what's required to drive price to where uh, your entry is. And this is simply because uh, during news releases, uh, liquidity dries up. And so price has to travel further in order to find the liquidity required to stop price. And so if we have this one here, this is a, you can see we have a red rectangle here, just here. This tells us that we have daily demand down here. If we if we have a look, you can see, yes, we do actually, we have daily demand. And on a, a daily chart, you can see that, well, price, I'm going to remove this. I mean, price has already been back down here. Matter of fact, it's already been back down to the low here. We'll move it just here on the release. We kind of came close to it here. This is where we reached it. So now price has been back down to here. What does that mean? Well, that means you don't want to start buying until price moves below this, which brings our attention to this just down here. And then looking at this, you can see looking at this, it would bring our attention to stuff like this, like poor quality supply and demand. And is this poor quality or is this high quality? Well, what I like, I like the price kind of uh, traded relatively efficiently up into this area before a release. So this tells us that this was fresh demand that entered the market 
uh, since um, uh, since the release. So that would make me feel more comfortable uh, trading here. And notice that we have like a major swing high here. The area of demand that caused price to move through it uh, was this here. So this is the origin of the strong move required to move price above this. Okay. Um, yes. So, I mean, that's what I have to say about it. You can see that price has been drifting sideways. So we have, this is the picture of agreement in supply and demand, not disagreement. The disagreement comes here. So you could have a kind of a quick trade here. If you like, you could also kind of focus on where price has been back to and have a look down in here and see if there's something else going on here. But ideally, as I mentioned just a minute ago, you want to focus on the current price imbalance. Otherwise, you'll never get a trade. You'll keep going back and keep going back and you'll be all the way down here and you'll never get any fills whatsoever. So look at the most current push lower. This is this one here. So the buy zone starts here and it stops here. Okay. Once price comes back into here and has a reaction, look lower. Okay. And you can see there's a lot of moving here. I wouldn't touch anything in here, but what I would do is I would look to buy once price comes back down below this low. So the buy zone starts here and it goes to here. And looking at this, you can see that we have, we have a parent, a child, but is this, a, is this a parent? Well, price came back to it here. We came a little bit lower. You can see that right here, we have some demand as well. You can see a rally, uh, accumulation rally. So this and price almost came to it. So I'd feel more comfortable trading in here than I would um, uh, up here um, for that reason. Okay. Okay. Let's see what are we doing for time. 41 minutes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to kind of stop talking and have a look at some of these questions. Um, Okay, uh, Rain is asking, what are your thoughts about using uh, Ichi Moku Cloud? I don't use them. Why? Because number one, I don't understand them. And number two, they're simply a secondary representation of price. So the, the most important thing is price. Actually, the most important thing is liquidity distribution. And then you have price, which is built on top of that. Price is a reaction to how liquidity is distributed. Um, sorry, that got a few extra Ds there, distributed um, in the FX market or any market for that matter. And so this is simply showing us um, a very clear pattern of how uh, liquidity was, dist was distributed um, from my broker, which is, um, um, well, it doesn't matter who my broker is um, because it's the same. And so you can see that price has already been back down here, you know, and so paying attention to this stuff instead of uh, kind of uh, moving averages or oscillators is, um, is going to bring your attention to what's actually important um, because secondary represent, uh, representations of price, um, yeah, I don't use them because I don't understand them. I do understand liquidity distribution. That's why I use that. If I was um, skilled at uh, Bollinger Bands or whatever, then I would probably use those, but I don't because I don't know them. I don't understand them. But what I do understand is, is this. Um, I wrote this software here that shows me how liquidity is distributed in the market. Um, and this makes perfect sense to me when I look at, I do understand currency strength. So the differences in the flows between the British pound and the American dollar, um, I understand this when I look at this. And so this is, this is pretty much what I use. Um, but I mean, I know a couple of people who use uh, the clouds and, and they do very, very well. And I think that's a magnificent. Hey, Carlos, good to see you. Um, you've got a question. I think we need to build context around supply and demand strategy, starting at the three month and monthly charts and analyzing how uh, the opposite areas have been either respected or taken out. Otherwise, it's difficult to make a case uh, to trade the lower time frames. Uh, market sentiment, long short position ratios are properly analyzed. Structure could be an effective enhancer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as we mentioned earlier, I mean, you need to know what's driving price. Okay, so I mentioned on a on the previous slide here. Um, yeah, what's yeah, this one here? No concept of what's driving price. You need to know this, and this you get when you pay attention to the larger time frames, the major flows, which is is um, is ultimately what Carlos is talking about. It'll really, really, and I'll say it one more time, really um, help you. Uh, with your trading. If you understand what's going on on the three month, the monthly uh, and the daily charts, and you're trading on the 50 minute or the one one hour, 
whatever, you're really going to be uh, setting yourself up for a, for a positive surprise because you're going to be trading in line with these major flows, especially if you're taking hourly entries at monthly demand, for example. I mean, amazing things will happen. Amazing things will happen. And despite the fact that, yeah, we have monthly uh, charts and oh, man, price has to travel 3,000 pips to get there or whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't have to trade a lot to do well. You don't have to trade a lot to do well. As a matter of fact, I mean, we have a guy who we're recruiting to, to trade for us. And this guy, he doesn't trade a lot. He trades in the four hour, the one hour, the weekly and the monthly charts where he's paying attention to the larger time frames. And his, um, his hit ratio is about 27%. And you think he's winning 27% of his trades. So he, one quarter of his trades, what an idiot, what a schmuck. He, he's, he must obviously be losing money. You know what? He's absolutely killing it. He's doing so, so well. Why? Because his risk reward is in order. He's, he's paying attention to the major flows, which enables him to what? To do this. Um, okay, being, okay, realistic results. Is it realistic to have a risk reward when you're looking at uh, the weekly chart? Well, it becomes more realistic when you're paying attention to the flows on the bigger time frame. If you're expecting a five to one and eight to one on the smaller time frames, well, yes, they certainly can happen. But unless you're knowing what's going on in the bigger time frames, then it's going to be a much more of a struggle. And you'll find that you're going to be fiddling with your trades and managing them much more aggressively because you'll be fighting the major flows. So I really recommend that you pay attention to what's going on on the, on the major flows. And I simply use currency strength for this. Um, what's to help me? I obviously do my top down um, and then I pay attention to what's going on on the, on the, on these time frames. You can see currently on this chart, you can see that we have, this is the Euro that was discussed just a second ago. So we have, we have this before I do anything, price came down accumulation. We have two periods of accumulation then price moved away. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark off this and why this, because price has already come back to this area here. Okay. You can see the price is approaching the area now. It looks like we're getting, uh, where price is accumulating, uh, likely to move higher. I mean, obviously we have, we have an upward trend and we see price is kind of moving up like that very clearly. Um, and price is moving higher. We're approaching this. And so we, until we see this area of supply be respected. So we see, uh, limit orders being filled to uh, move order flows uh, to the downside. So we see much more selling than buying. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want to be selling. You want to wait until you see confirmation that price is going to hold. We have a monthly trend moving higher. We have this area of supply that price is getting closer to. And so until price gets in here, we're getting to the very, the very low of it here. Um, you can continue to buy. Keep in mind that we are indeed reacting at supply just here. Okay, so really spend some more time on these bigger time frames. I know they, they're really boring. There's not a lot of action, but trading isn't entertainment. It's a profession like anything else. And so, I mean, if we're brain surgeons, you know, we're not looking for entertainment uh, while we're performing surgery. We, we're looking to do our job as best as we possibly can. And so paying attention to the detail is going to ensure that you're paying attention to, to the important stuff. But so you can see prices moving higher. What's going on in the weekly? You can see why well, we have, we have, where are these rectangles? Where well, these rectangles are below price. That means we have the flows, the major flows moving higher. Um, price is reacting. It's taken this one out here. You can see we have this here. This is not a nice area because why? Because I mean, price didn't leave in a hurry. It kind of left and accumulated just below the area. But what I do like about this one here, when price left here, we managed to move below this this uh, this major swing low here, but there's too much trading in and around here. Um, this looks interesting here. Price kind of broke away from here. We had market structure failure um, at this area just here. You can see we had we had a trend line that we could have drawn here. So you can see pretty clearly resistance becomes support. Blah blah blah. Test it. This accumulates just on the area, and then price breaks. So the area the price broke away from is here. And so then you have to go and you have to study these three periods of, of um, a distribution just here um, and then see what's going on. You can see we have this area here. It's been tested how many times? Once. So for this area, for this price imbalance, I'm going to focus on there. Your sell zone starts there. The 128 
uh, the 129 ish, and it goes up to the high of this area here, and you put your stop above that. Okay, so this has been tested once, twice. Are we going to get a reaction there? Absolutely, because this is the weekly chart. If you're on the one hour chart, you're probably going to get a reaction there. And so you certainly can get in and get out before price manages to gnaw through that. Okay, Carl's saying, Sarid, uh, do you trade options, bonds, or the futures? I don't. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a economist or a fin finance guy. I'm a, um, kind of computer scientist. So I don't understand, um, uh, options or bonds or futures. I do understand currencies from a technical uh, perspective. Um, due to my security work, you know, working, doing security assessments for, for banks. Um, and a lot of the guys who I spoke with throughout the course of my security career, career were, uh, currency traders. And so this is kind of the stuff I was introduced to. Um, but I wish I did. And maybe longer term, I'll, uh, I'll be more aware of it. But, um, no, I'm not. I'm kind of like, um, kind of, uh, yeah. I'm going to say very currency uh, fixated. Um, they, they didn't teach me, uh, supply and demand, but they, they taught me what to focus on. I mean, I mean, when I was doing security work in the banks, um, Ultimately, what are the banks all about? They're all they're on the sell side, liquidity distribution, and so this is the stuff that I that they talked about all the time when we had lunch and stuff together. And so this is um this is kind of my perspective. Also, my my um my my initial uh, mentor that I that I had some years ago, he was also a, a sell side guy, and he also introduced these concepts, introduced me to these concepts, and so it that's kind of my entry into the market. And thank God for that, because I really am pleased that I wasn't introduced to kind of moving averages and stuff like that, because I, I think it's um, a little bit more difficult to get a hand on. Yes, totally, Carlos. Options is a great market to trade using the proper concept of volatility. Yeah, I'll have, maybe one day I'll get into those. Actually, my family and I, we're relocating. We're leaving uh, Scandinavia. We're moving to Indonesia um, this summer. And so we'll have we'll have more time. Uh, then and then maybe I'll um, have a look at these other things now uh, at that time there. So uh, lots of exciting potential in the future, I think. Cool. How are we, how are we um, doing at time wise? We're kind of pretty close to our hour. Um, okay. Rain is saying, does volume help locating entry and sell point? Um, for stocks um, and centrally traded uh, entities, it would be. But due to the decentralized nature of the currency market, it makes it really difficult because my broker can show me a volume. Um, this is my broker's volume, but I mean, my broker is a small fish. Um, and so on the, the grand scale of things, it might be misleading to use uh, my broker's volume. I don't, know, I don't know how many customers this broker has, um, but it's yeah, volume is a difficult thing to use with currencies due simply due to the, the decentralized nature of the beast. So, no, I don't use volume. What I do use is kind of just like major, major swings, you know, because this is important to me because this is kind of the turning points in price. I mean, why did price turn here? This is a four hour chart. Price left here and it went up here. Is that important? It is really important because there must have been a lot of buying down here to make the four hour chart look like that. And you can see here that <clears throat> from here, when price came back down to here, it came, we reacted to the child here. We were patient. We waited. Price came back to it. We filled. And our price is kind of wriggling higher from there. Below that, if we move this lower now, below that, we can see we have some demand just down here. And so obviously, we would bring our attention to a price. We wouldn't want to pay a price any more expensive than the low of this um, intermediate uh, swing low here. And it's still the little orange thing there. That kind of tells us that it's still uh, in play. And we have this one here as well and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, you can keep on going forever. Cool. And you guys have any more questions? I hope this stuff is interesting. I and mean, I certainly like to talk about it, but I just hope that you guys um, see value in it. Um, any other questions before we uh, wrap things up? What do you reckon, FX Street? Are we uh, are we good to go for today? Just running through these questions here. I think we're um cool. No more no more comments. It seems so. I think we'll um we'll we'll wrap things up.
Hey, Carl, it's just an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for, for being here. I, you're always in here and I really do uh, appreciate your support. It's, uh, it's really, really good. If you guys want to kind of hear about more of what I do, then you're welcome. You can come by here. I'm at, I operate at pipnotic.com uh, is my Twitter handle. Um, it's like it is writing trading software and trading. Um, so all the, all the stuff that I get up to, you can, you can find here. So feel free to either shoot me an email or, or come and visit us. Um, I'd be, we'd be pleased to uh, see you in there. We also have like a kind of a chat forum where people meet up and chit chat, which is good. That can also be helpful, but yeah, come and visit us, uh, read our blog posts and stuff like that. If anything's interesting, uh, feel free to, to shoot us a, um, uh, an email. Super good, Thomas. Thank you so much. Uh, Rain from Estonia. Nice. Very good. I've been there many times. <laughs> you guys are really dealing with the cold weather. I should be complaining with my minus, minus five degrees here. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, Adinda, thank you so much for having me. FX Street, thank you very much for having me once again. It's a, it's a very, very enjoyable to, to be here as always. And, uh, yeah, these are recorded, so you guys will be able to uh, see the recording if someone got in here uh, late, as um, as you did, Thomas. Good stuff. Okay, FX Street, thank you very much for, for having me, and, um, and I will see you all again next month. And if